Good morning, class. We got lesson 5B, The Temptation of Jesus. It's found in both Matthew as well as Luke. And this story follows ex immediately after our last story, which was Jesus being baptized. Remember, Jesus went to John and said, please baptize me. John didn't want him to baptize Jesus because Jesus was sinless. Jesus did not need to be baptized to wash his sins away. He needed to be baptized to start his ministry. And he thought that this would be the great way. And of course, the Holy Spirit showed up in the form of a dove. God the Father showed up by opening the heavens and calling down, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And Jesus' public ministry is going to start. But wait, we want to make sure that God is tr that Jesus is true God. And so we got to have a true God who is sinless. Yet we have to have a God who is true man so he can suffer for our sins. And so Jesus is going to show us those two things in his temptation today. After Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit led him out into the wilderness. So far out into the wilderness. Now, a wilderness is just an area where no people live. There's nobody around to take care of you. There's no stores for you to buy groceries at. Uh, there's, there's no movie theaters to go and have some entertainment. This is a wilderness, a wide open area. And here Jesus goes, and not just for one day and one night and two days and night. He stays there for 40 days and 40 nights. And while he is there, he's not eating anything. I don't know you, about you, but if I don't eat my breakfast, by about 9 o'clock, I'm cranky, ready to eat, let alone going all day without food. Now, Jesus is going to do this for 40 days. It's called fasting. And when you're fasting, this is an opportunity for you to think more clearly. Well, the devil's not going to take this lightly. Because Jesus is true man, he will be tempted, just like you and I are tempted. And so the devil shows up. Now, a lot of Bible scholars say that Jesus was tempted all the time for 40 days and for 40 nights. But the Bible highlights three of the biggest temptations. So today we're going to concentrate on those three temptations. The first one, the devil uses, well, Jesus need to eat. True human beings need to eat. And so he's hungry. He's starving for 40 days and 40 nights, no food. And the devil says, hey, Jesus, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do it. Why don't you take a look at those rocks over there and make those rocks into bread? You could change rocks into bread. You're a true God. Go ahead and do that. And could Jesus do that? You bet. Would it be okay for Jesus to have made rocks into bread and had something to eat? You bet. Except for Jesus is not going to listen to the devil. That would have been a sin. And so he says, no, I'm not going to do that. And yet he uses God's word to say, devil, you can't tempt me. And here's what Jesus said. A person doesn't live on bread alone. No, you need God's word for this life. What does this mean for us? Well, we should be studying God's word. You're doing it right now by listening to this video. You're hearing God's word. It comes from the Bible in both Matthew and Luke. God's word strengthens our faith, and that too is necessary for your life here on earth. It helps you to make wise choices and to fight off the temptations of the devil. If the devil tempts me to do something, and I can think of a Bible passage that tells me to not do that, well, that would be using God's word. And so Jesus says, no thanks, I'm not going to change the rocks into bread and eat. No, a man doesn't live on bread alone. He also needs God's word. The devil, of course, doesn't give up. This time he takes Jesus to Jerusalem, the capital city. And in the capital city, they have this magnificent temple that was built there. And so now the devil puts Jesus on top of the temple. And this time, the devil uses God's word. Isn't that interesting that the devil knows God's word? He says, in God's word, it says that God will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. And what that means is, God sends guardian angels to be with you. Is that true? Yes. You have angels with you in your house. You have angels with you when you're in your vehicles. There are angels with me. Well, why do I have things still happening? Well, there's sin in the world, so bad things are going to still happen to you. But I bet you can think of some angel stories. When I was a kid, I don't know how it happened, but we were driving down the freeway, and our van went into a spin and we spun 360 and went into the ditch and you know thought somebody got hurt but nobody got hurt it was our angels protecting us maybe or maybe my mom was a really good driver you don't know but there's many many times where something terrible could have happened to you and your angels have protected you god's word does say that so the devil uses god's own word but he tells jesus jump 
Go to the tallest building in all of Jerusalem and jump. God's going to protect you. Is that what the Bible passage really meant? Jesus says, no way. There's another passage that says, don't put yourself in danger. Wait, don't put the Lord your God to the test. This would be like me walking down Capitol Drive right in the middle of traffic on a busy day. And all these cars are zipping by me and I'm going to step right in front of a car and say, God's going to protect me. That's a terrible idea. We would never put God to the test. Is his angels going to protect us? You bet. But don't put yourself in harm's way. Now that can mean a lot of things uh, nowadays that didn't mean in Jesus' time. Putting yourself in harm's way might mean the internet. Viewing inappropriate things on the internet is putting yourself in, in harm's way. Maybe there's something bad going on in your neighborhood close to your house. Is it a great idea to rush right out there and see what's going on? Probably not a real good idea. Don't put yourself in harm's way. And Jesus fight, fought off the devil's big temptation, number two. Well, the devil's not going to give up that easy. And so he takes Jesus back to the wilderness, to the top of a mountain. And on top of the mountain, he shows him all the kingdoms of the world. Now, when you're on top of a mountain, you can't see the whole world. So I'm not exactly sure how this happened, but he saw all the kingdoms of the world. And this kingdom over here, and all its wealth and its riches. And this ruler over here, and his powerful army, and his a magnificent capital city. And all the world has to offer. In other words, is Jesus going to give in to the sin of greed? I want that money. I want that kingdom. I want that power. Like sometimes we human beings want, right? I would like this for my birthday, and I, oh, my neighbor has this brand new fancy mower. I would really like a new fancy mower. Oh, and my friend just bought a new truck. I really want a new truck. And we get greedy, we get greedy, and the devil's trying to tempt Jesus to be greedy, to want, to covet things. And, well, Jesus finally says, get away from me, Satan. You know, what's really cool about this is the devil, as powerful as he is, cannot resist Jesus. Jesus said, get away from me, and the devil had to listen. And Jesus told him, get away from me, Satan. Get away from me, Satan. God says that you should only worship God. You see, Satan wanted to give him all this up. All you have to do is bow down and worship Satan. And if Jesus would have done this, he would have sinned. And if he would have sinned, he couldn't be our Savior. But Jesus says, get away. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Again, for a third time in a row, he used God's word to fight off the temptation of the devil. Well, after the devil left, because he had to leave, God commanded him. Angels came and attended to Jesus. What this means is they brought him food, and they encouraged him, and they were there with Jesus. Well, what should we take away from this lesson? Obviously, use God's word to fight off the temptation. The devil's for real. He is out there, and he is tempting us to do things which we know is wrong. And how do we know they're wrong? Well, God gives us this amazing thing. It's called the conscience. And sometimes this conscience inside of me says, ooh, is anybody looking? As soon as it says, is anybody looking, you know that's probably something you're not supposed to be doing. Or after you did something wrong, I broke my mom's face once and I tried to glue it back together. And I felt terrible. And when mom walked in, I said, mom, you won't believe what I did. I broke your face. And why did I do that? Because my conscience said, I sinned. And so God has given us these things so that we can say, hey, no to the temptations of the devil. Use God's word. Well, if you're going to use God's word, you have to know God's word. So receive the encouragement today to not only listen to your Christ-like stories, not only read your Christ-like stories, but open your Bibles, study God's word, and be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to help fight off the devil and all of his temptations. God bless your day.